Hello, and welcome to the Old Farm Bus Podcast. This is the back of the bus session. Hello and welcome to the Old Farm Bus Back of the Bus Sessions podcast. She's going mad already. I'm excited for this. That is energy I need right now. I'm really excited about this guest. Her name is Tori Sheard, just like Beard, but it's Sheard. Did it? Yeah! <laughs> How are you doing, lovely? I'm really good, thank How you. How have you been holding up through this wonderful time? <laughs> or wacky time? All things Which considered. Which should we go for? I think it's an interesting time. It's, mm. a very, it's a very important time. Um, I'm actually really good. All you look it, you considered. feel it. I mean, I've met you a handful of times. You've been on the bus before. I saw you in Nottingham at a night. I can just vividly remember being upstairs and going... You're a really nice person. <laughs> I got that vibe straight away. But I've been enjoying and thinking about exploring you as a character and what you're about. When I look on your Instagram, it used to be very just musical based. And as I've been seeing you progress and pretty much through COVID times yeah. and lockdown, it seems to have changed hands. Have you had a big shift in your life? As cliche as that question can come across. <laughs> Huge. I've had the Let's dive in. Shift. Do you want to go straight in? Let, look, we're, we're in. All right. <laughs> we're All right. No small talk. <laughs> yeah. I've had this huge, huge shift and I've been calling it an identity crisis mm -hmm. um, quite flippantly. But if, I, if I'm really honest, it feels like, like an awakening. And I don't, I I don't that mean word. that I'm enlightened or anything, but I mean my sense of self has been shaken up and flipped on its head and mm. my whole identity and the whole way that I viewed myself, the whole lockdown forced me to go, right, what am I? Mm. What am I without the labels of musician? Because you can't do any gigs or music. Or my, I had a whole UK tour and it got cancelled. Mm, wow. Uh, I was going to play Splendour Festival and all these big things just... Gone. God, I remember seeing that. Like, your name just amongst all these crazy yeah. big names. I'm like, Tori, you've done something right. Yeah. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah, and it's, it's happening again this year now, hopefully. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's like, well, I'm in lockdown. We've got however long we've got here. I can't do what I love. Mm. What am I without the label of musician? Mm. Um, Would that be sort of a common theme and path for you when you meet people before the awakening yeah. <laughs> would it be hi i'm tori i'm a musician yeah. hi i'm tori everyone you sort of met yeah. i definitely give myself that mm -hmm. identity so did you grow quite a strong ego from that sense yeah, of self and sure. what you were you watched the film soul didn't you is this what's happened no, no, no it. <laughs> oh, it? i promise you that is your homework tonight all right soul is Probably one of my favourite films. Of, I mean, I'm a Disney freak anyway, all over me. Mm. But Soul is getting a place. When tattoo shops open again, I think I've got space on this arm. Going to get a big Sweet. Soul. It's so good. But I've good things. A big, a big part of that is all about you're not what you do. You're so much more than that. You're the moments, you're living in nature, you're living with friends, you're making connections and all these wholesome things. Yeah. And it embodies that in the whole film. So that seems to be what you've woken up to, I suppose, yeah. is the way of putting it. So sure. what was that where you were painting a fence, was it? <laughs> I was painting a fence. So it was the first week of lockdown. I was painting my parents fences um, <laughs> this is the have, best story a lot of time to think i know and yeah. it was so ever since i was i started gigging when i was about 15 and i did i've been gigging every weekend even more times a week since since then wow. and it was like right music's my thing now mm. this is this is it um and i could not describe myself without talking about music mm. um but a lot of the time, I, I don't know if I was actually enjoying it yeah, or if I was just doing it because it was something that made me feel special. Mm. When you've got a thing, yeah, music yeah. is your thing. It makes you a bit different and it gives you a sense of purpose. Huh. Um, and I, I got very fixated on that and I was like, right, I've got this goal. I started all very organically and I just wrote these songs and I made an EP and it did kind of well. We did these shows and it was great. But... I got very hyper focused on the goal of right let's be a successful musician my logic brain kicks in and goes how are we going to get there we're going to do this 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 
I was mm. making, even in lockdown, I was making spreadsheets. I hate spreadsheets. <laughs> yeah, I'm not a spreadsheet and kind of guy. And I was planning and mm. all, and I was learning all these marketing strategies and I was learning all the time. Mm. But um, I wasn't creating. Mm. Um, I got to the point I hadn't written or sang for fun in six months and I was doing this plan because... I don't know, it gave me, it was my ego, my identity. Mm. And you come quite attack-minded with it. Yeah, and I was just I like, go, go, go. I make it, I need I to need, make it. And I think I felt like I had to become conventionally successful to feel worthy. Mm. And a lot of my sense of self-worth was coming from being productive. And if I wasn't being productive, I wasn't worthy. Mm. I, was, I was so, like, in my masculine and in my doing. Yes. And I wasn't being... Oh man, this so, what what discovery on the way on the path. I didn't even realise. So yeah, I was painting these fences. <laughs> yeah, I can imagine. Wow. I painted okay. so many fences. <laughs> Quite a big garden. I can imagine with this fence, it would have just been a big scribble for me. You know, <laughs> yeah. going, oh my, this emotion, and then yeah. suddenly you look back at it, and it was this masterpiece and I was of to mine. Ariana Grande. Okay. Oh, painting these fences. <laughs> you need to get in touch with her. Let her know the spiritual revolution come through her music while yeah, painting it a wasn't fence. Like, it wasn't anyone. It's, it's just very Rachel. interesting though because you say it's been quite gradual mm. as you've been picking up stuff and learning and thinking about things differently because there's so many new types of spiritual mind and revolution and for me I was forced into it I was pushed through it mm. I had this sense of self huge attachment to who I was everybody I'd introduce I go to a party just be really can I do your poem can I do your poem oh. <laughs> it's what I had to be and to to some degree, like what spirituality has taught me is balance, mm. and that actually created a lot of opportunity. So I did become a poet from it because I'm a bit tenacious, and my mum's very tenacious. So when she tells me I can't do something, I'm doing that thing. So for her, she liked the traditional, you know, you get a job, yeah. you go to work nine to five, do your thing, you've got to make your living. Mm. And I just couldn't fit that system. I got kicked out of my schools. I've been travelling, come back from travelling. And then there was just no job that fit me. So when I found poetry, because I lost a friend to a knife crime incident, and that was the cathartic tool that got given to me at that mm. point, I it was just a massive passion. I'd never felt anything like that before. I'd never been heard. Mm. So then I told my mum, I'm in the kitchen, I'm like, I'm going to be a poet. <laughs> she's just no no way holds it who's a poet and who who makes money by that yeah, a real job. yeah exactly so i become very tenacious in that pursuit of becoming a poet and it did I, I was going into schools eventually i worked in prisons i worked at um colleges and it become my identity yep. i was really proud of it and a big part of that was the constant, the being, I am a poet, I am a poet, performing here, having yeah. a big pursuit. It took me to a place, but it did come crumbling down eventually because I didn't, I wasn't living life. I wasn't having those beautiful esoteric moments and living for the moment. Yeah. It was all future planning. So there, there's a, a grateful balance to be taken out of this and I don't just obliterate that persona of who what I've got about me but it's just an added addition that's mm -hmm. part of my passion I also like this and I also like that yes. and I'm present here it's it's so important and integral for people to go through I've just heard it's so common in musicians now and artists and yeah. think it's just because we haven't been able to express to one another, be out with one another, do what we usually do. And we've had to think in these new ways. Mm. So I'm very interested to see what comes out of this for people yeah. and how we approach one another. Very exciting. Sure. It's going to be... It was going to be all very different. I think. Electric. Well, hopefully for good reasons, you know. I do feel although, that. Although it's, I'm very privileged to be able to say, look, I've used this lockdown to grow and to reflect. Mm. Not everyone's had that privilege. Of and course. So many people have Fearful. struggled. And yeah, lost, lost money. jobs. So many of our friends will be creatives and lost work. But hopefully the world coming to a pause mm. so profound. Such I, I, a I feel thing. it, honestly. The conversations 
post lockdown before we knew what a lockdown was yeah. <laughs> where we are all just in pilot mode and living and some of us caught up in jobs we hate mm -hmm. and lifestyles and so on that we're not happy with but it just feels like a stone in the shoe it's not painful enough yet to take it out so you just mm -hmm. keep going keep going but then when lockdown tells you oh by the way you are stopping mm -hmm. We've had to all completely reevaluate what we want and what we're about. Yes. And it, it's just beautiful I'm getting that sense from you today and hearing what your journey is. Yeah. So <laughs> before that as well, can we go back into your childhood then? Let's what better way to get to know somebody than going to the start? Sure. <laughs> Was it a very loving and happy childhood? So yeah. where did you grow up? I grew up in a little village called East Leak in Leicestershire. Leicestershire. It's kind of Nottingham, Leicester. Right. Why did you go all posh then? <laughs> Leicestershire. Leicestershire. <laughs> Come to my shire. Well, it's not Leicester. <laughs> Leicester, <Shire>. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. tell, tell me about that. Just a little village. My dad's been there all his life. My grandma's been there all her life. My granddad on my dad's side was in a nearby village his whole life. So, very, very villagey, very mm. small. Everybody kind of knew each other. Um, my mum, my mum has, my mum's family were travellers okay. on the fairground, um, like Doncaster. Wow. Way, which is, I, I view it like I get my logic grounded hard workingness from the dad's side, which mm. is village people, very kind of village. They like what they like. Yeah. They know what they know, They're sort of. grounded. Yeah, yeah. And then I've got the fairground side. Hmm. And they are forces of nature on that side of the I family. love it when this comes through. I can feel it in your energy. <laughs> I'm so inspired. Yeah. I need this. I need the grounded mm. side. But this fiery side and there are so many fierce, creative women. Mm. And most people are self-employed. And then it, obviously the generation before that would be working on the fairground. My grandma, my mum's mum, used to be... Um, a sleeping beauty so she'd lie in a whatever and she'd be in like the freak show as a what? sleeping beauty and she'd just like lay there did you like as a young person get to go and see this no i missed it so oh it so you just my hearing mum. the stories and the so anecdotes my mum grew up in a house but my mum's mum grew up on the fairground wow yeah and this there's so much cool. we don't know about the family because there's no birth certificates or family trees but you just hear the stories from it but the spirit yeah is so strong and um i view it like i've got I think I've got these spirit guides okay. and I've got the very ethereal, the Hennigan side, which is my mum's side, the floaty, free, very free spirited. Mm. And that's my Sagittarius moon, mm. if you would, if you would, if you will. <laughs> um, and then the grounded guides, which are very earthly, material, kind of the grounded people mm -hmm. that keep me safe. Mm. These ones keep me inspired. So, And you had no feelings or thoughts of this before lockdown is this quite new that yeah. you're actually aware of these energies yeah. and spirits in your life yeah and it's made you become quite understanding of the person you are and why the way they are yeah do you think it's important for people to know their roots then and particularly star signs i'm very new to it mm. but how how new is that into your life too um, do you mean astrology or do you mean... Astrology, yeah, what's the difference? Um, you are talking to a novice here, so you can tell me anything astrology. I don't, I don't know enough to be able to talk <laughs> about it, but uh, I started learning how to read birth charts. Wow. So um, I'm not, I don't know, I'm no, I'm no expert. Because you mentioned a few but... things in that, you said about energies, yeah. and then you said about Sagittarius, so yeah. are they quite intertwined? the energy that you are is very reflective of the star sign, no pun intended. Yeah, I think it depends how you how you view it. So I've got uh, my Virgo, my sun, sun sign is Virgo, and that's your main kind of one. Hmm. Um, your sun is like the way that you are, but your moon is like your soul and your mm, emotions. This is cool. Yeah, Genuinely, and then yeah. you've got your rising sign, which I think is how you're perceived. Oh. So my... Sun and rising or Virgo, but then my moon, my soul is mm. Sagittarius. So I've got the very logical Virgo mm. and the very free spirited, uh, kind of more wild Sagittarius. <laughs> so 
I'm kind of honing in on that balance and it just really matches the two sides of my family I don't know how that links or where were you spending predominantly most of your time as a child was it with the grounded side or the wildfired side grounded probably mm. probably because it was just norm very normal mm. normal school normal neighborhood very safe very privileged very sensible mm. it's very sensible and okay. I've always had the creative side but um I've never fully embraced the 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 more wild side until recently because wow. something has clicked. That's so exciting. Yeah. So you you had this sort of normal archetypal living with privilege. Yeah. Um you're 21. Yeah. So is it literally in your 20s that you've discovered this fiery side or the wild magical side? Mm. I got into mm. the whole spiritual stuff maybe mm. I was 16. And oh. my friend came into school one day and she told me about the astral planes. Dude, I love stuff. I really do planes. love things like this, yeah. And she <laughs> told me to watch this YouTube video. It was Koi Fresco, if you know him. Or mm. his name's Vishuda Das now. Um, and it, it was just like a YouTube rabbit hole. Really? Down from there. <laughs> Down we go. And it started with the whole like astral projection thing that I was reading about. And then then you get into the whole everything is energy and then you get mm. into all you know the you know the type of rabbit hole oh completely i've been on them mm. i think it was also what we're talking about at the start how me having ego mm. and me having identity it's hilariously i had a, an ego about not having ego at oh one stage oh my second. god <laughs> yeah. so much ego around like, being a spiritual person yeah totally and so looking like a spiritual person and completely to... and that become a source of who I was as well, my spirituality. You've got to check yourself. And uh, you said something beautiful before the podcast of the you want to speak. You're doing your own podcast, which we'll get into, but how you want to just meet real people, mm. honest people, authentic people who are quote unquote normal. Mm. I know there's a very different senses of yeah. normal, but I would put my dad in that bracket. And he just embodies Zen Buddhism. He has no idea <laughs> about it. He doesn't know anything about Zen Buddhism. But all of the sort of jargon words that you'd spout out, like being in the moment, mm. um, not having um, attachment and so on, he just does it. He yeah. completely mm. all day is on the farm, he's got his headphones in, he's having a laugh and he's just walking through the day. Just is. Uh, just is and he's being. And I, literally, I think I had to stop him one day and said, Dad, what are you thinking about now? He's like, nothing. <laughs> like, you lucky git. <laughs> you lucky. I really want mm. that. <laughs> but were you quite an overthinker? Have you had that oh, as whole, a part of your whole soul? childhood of anxiety. Really? Whole whole thing. I've started having some counselling recently, so I've started diving Brill. into that. And I think there's a lot of OCD that was actually in there. Right, which is really okay. really interesting. Very anxious kid. There's all some... Somewhere, sometimes some taboos towards therapy mm. or counseling um do you would you put it forward to everybody do you think everybody could do with counseling in some way i think so yeah and i've only had the one session um, oh wow so i will i'm going to speak about it more on my instagram i think as i Fantastic. learn more about it and i really want to be open about it especially with ocd because it's so misunderstood ah. um, but i think we all need it yeah. just a space where you can speak to someone that you don't know it's not going to go anywhere. You're not going to get misunderstood. Your family's not going to remember it or worry about it. And you they're neutral. Got... They Yeah, you just say it. Mm. Understand it. It's less scary when you say it out loud. You're you, not you, as crazy as you think you are. You sometimes think when you're with friends or when you're with the partner in particular mm. or family, you're doing your counselling because you're talking to them. Yeah. But it, they're going to have sort of... Um, a verdict on it or they're going to have feeling or mm. opinion it's not going to be of a neutral platform yeah. but when you're speaking to somebody completely away from you away from the situations they can give you a very honest outlook to it where can, they're not trying to mm. sway you in any direction and you can understand it yeah yeah and then it's it shrinks and mm. then you can let it go i think it, it does help having the right person and the right therapist, yeah. the right people um, that just connect with you. Mm -hmm. Because at school, um, education system, they were just constantly trying to work out what's wrong with me. I couldn't sit oh. still. I was always up and about. Mm. I was dyslexic. Mm -hmm. So I, up, you were in the top classes of everything. I was put in the bottom of everything. It affects you. Uh, completely. And I, you know, 
thought myself as stupid. I just believed that was what I was. I didn't have a purpose on this planet. There was no need. And again, you've got a brother that was very similar to me. My sister's five years older and went to the same school. And I think I've said this anecdote before, so I'll brush it. But I remember my mum coming from my last meeting with the head teacher. Who was ve- he was a militant man. He was from the Marines, coming with the head teacher, hardcore guy. And uh, my sister's got a different second name to me. We're, st- we're related, but she's a Mullen for Rose and I'm a Markham. And he's just screaming at my mum. And my mum doesn't take a screaming at. She goes back. She's got a powerful energy. Nice. So, seriously, what is he doing with at home? He can't read. He can't spell. And then my mum's like, he comes to school to learn. It's your responsibility. And they're throwing this across. And then he whacks the table really hard. I remember it. I was sat there. And he went, Mrs. Markham, what are we going to do about your boy? And my mum who's really proud of her heritage and really proud of her second name, which is Mullen for Rose, just went, I am not a Markham. I'm Mrs. Mullen for Rose. Yes. And and this this is crazy, this bit. The teacher looked at me and then looked at my mum and went, are you Beth's mum? And my mum really proudly is like, yeah, I'm, I'm Beth's mum. And he looked at me and went, you must be so disappointed in Michael. Oh. <laughs> Crazy, oh isn't it? Goodness. I remember it so vividly, and I just thought, I, I, I am out oh, of this business. You. I hate school. So for me, it was just a crazy washing of emotion. I just, I, I, I hated. It, it was powerful, wasn't it? It was powerful. So. I went on a a rocky road and journey ever since then of discovery, why am I here, what is my purpose, meaning of life. So even with spiritual talk or anything where I got made to feel special, Mm. anything where somebody put energy Mm. in me, which I never had before, not even family really, it wasn't a very loving relationship, we've all been quite open about that since and connected from it. Mm. But anything where people give me that attention... I become really egoic about it, so I built something from it. Are you on a similar plane to that then? Have you had that experience before, Maybe. even though we're from different Maybe. sides? So I've always had a bit of an individuality complex. Mm. I always kind of oh, wanted well. to be different, and I wanted to be. I think maybe it's this thing of the artist. I, I've loved being centre of attention, and um, and I guess because I was always in the top group. And I'm, I'm not trying to make out that, that, oh, it's so, so hard being top of the class all the time. <laughs> but I, was, I was quite intelligent. I was quite academically intelligent. Mm. You were intelligent in, in your way. Yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, primary school, you're in the top class. And mm. I was always in with the year above me. Yeah. Um, wow. But then you get to secondary school and you're, it all changes because you're in with so many more different people and you mm. kind of become a bit more of a little fish. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, maybe me going from big fish to little fish um and still wanting to stand out and knowing that i did not want a conventional job Mm. sure it has all of this the whole school system it It, oh we can really get into the etiquette i truthfully believe because i work for a company called independent thinking Mm. and they are literally the other fish going that way is their logo so they're all flowing that Mm. way and they go that and they have uh, musicians and artists Mm. my favorite person possibly in the world but do you know the illingworths like laurie illingworth so martin illingworth i go into schools (laughs) with him i've been all over the country and listen to what he's about and it is just so different to what i've ever experienced before understood about the education system Mm. he really does focus on raw individuals i'll send you a film after this actually that he created it's called um his book uh, two books he's got uh, think before you teach and forget school Mm. but the film is called the only fresh air is outside in the yard and it's of this um so he's the head teacher but this kid that's not even naughty but just underseen like doesn't get picked up at any point in school yeah. you get loads of them middle kids you've either got the ones you focus on that yeah. are academically really gifted or the ones that are crazy and you've got to focus on them and then the ones in between that just plateau and go through school it's just, it just wasn't an experience but he picks him up at the end of the film 
and sees that he's in a fishing competition in the newspaper. So he finds his passion, the teacher sees this, sure. and then he has a meeting with all the other teachers. So he gets the artist teacher to start making fish with him at school, the historian to tell him about all the fishing in the past. And the, do you know what I mean? And everyone's using him mm. and his point of passion as the way of access mm. and the way of getting him to learn. And that really have because I had such a hatred for the education system and schools but when I am started meeting these people and reading these books and going into these schools that had similar philosophies I'm really kind of awakening to that I think it's growing I think it's getting better I'm quite optimistic now towards it and Chris is a teacher she works at schools and I think it is changing slowly mm. but the more people like yourself having a uh, plug podcast and platform conversations i think we're going in a better direction Te technology we're using people's passions yeah. their individuality it seems to be shifting i hope so i, I really think we were trapped so. in a little bit of a, a time warp the way we were at school particularly i'm 27 mm. and my school was really if you're gifted academically you're in yeah anything under that what's the point you're out yeah. and it was built on sort of that marine mindset yeah. we've got a, it's a factory we've got to build these people oh, in the it the whole fact it's like a production <laughs> line preparing you for whatever university job yeah retirement it's completely like a, there's that cartoon somewhere it's like everyone's on a conveyor belt and they just yes yeah they, they teach you how to behave mm, yeah conform they're not necessarily teaching you anything useful mm. they don't teach you how to pay taxes yeah yeah they don't, completely they don't teach you proper sex ed they don't teach no. you oh, so many things what was your sex ed like a video a youtube video really every now and then yeah I never did the whole condom on the banana thing, but I know a lot oh, of people but... did that. <laughs> I, I really, I, <laughs> I do suspect that the person that was teaching us sex ed hadn't had sex. No. I'm, honestly, I'm not being mean to him. He just didn't seem like the type that would. No. And all it was, I remember it so well, but he was just trying to terrify us for the whole no. session. It was a, a video and you're just getting shown all these, t l the worst case chlamydia, the worst <laughs> case HIV, the wor everything was worst case scenario, mm. just fear-based tactics. It's not going to stop anyone. It really isn't. It's going to kind of... When you feel lied to as well, do you know the same with drugs yeah. or substances? When you get later on in life and you go to your uni or you go and explore people, I went traveling and people were using substance and I was having sex, <laughs> you sort of go, oh, this is kind of interesting and enjoyable and yeah. a, a different experience to what I thought. So then. You feel like a sin. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you've got no regulation, you don't know how to take substances properly then you don't know how to have sex maturely and properly Consent. Consent, yeah treat people within sex so we, yeah i think we've got big milestones to hit in terms of sex ed i've not i've not been school for a while but i don't know if it's shifted dramatically in that term i doubt it yeah. i think the whole <laughs> system needs to change it just mm. needs to be all shaken up and rearranged and maybe the way they need to teach teaching needs to mm. change i don't i don't know enough about I'll, it I'll, will, I'll, I'll give you that book to read as well oh, i'll send you i'll send you a few th yeah. well actually you're going where are you going brighton, brighton. Mm, i'll never see that you book again we're like yeah, yeah I'll, 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 buy <laughs> I'll send you the film <laughs> <laughs> the film's good to watch on youtube cool, cool. thank you so <laughs> you are going to carry on music though because oh, yeah. one thing while we've been talking have been quite negative in a certain term mm. of ego mm. and to just kill off our ego it feels when i tried to do that on and eventually got to the point of oh i don't need to perform anymore i don't need to be this i stopped wanting to perform mm. um because i thought what's the point in essence i did come back round to the point of Oh, it was because I just enjoyed it. I just mm. really found that passion. I remembered it. But I, I've been through so many timescales and um, timelines in my journey of an artist. But I did get to a bit of a point killing off an ego and thinking, well, why would I get on a stage then? Because mm. I feel like I've been noticed now. I've been seen enough. Sure. I've had enough likes or shares or <laughs> whatever it is. Validation. Yeah, that validation. What If you don't seek validation, you don't seek to be seen... Mm. what is putting you on stages and so on do you know what i mean sharing 
sharing. The yeah. Lord, what a lovely answer. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, music. I've I've been on a whole journey with it, and um, I've got to a point where I don't even feel right calling myself a musician. Hmm. Um, because I had to be really honest with myself. I don't enjoy playing guitar very much anymore. Mm -hmm. um, some people can just sit all day and they can play, or they can produce, or they can learn instruments. Um, I have a connection to the guitar because it helps me create the beds that mm. my songs go on. Yeah, yeah. Um, but act the actual music parts and the theory and all of the technical stuff, I'm not interested. Mm. I'm not. <laughs> um, but songwriting has yeah. my heart, and singing has my heart, and performing has my heart. Um, and it all comes down to communication, mm. to sharing, um, whether it's music, whether it, whether it's just oh, look at my outfit today and yeah. posting it on Instagram. I think yeah. it's, it's authentic sharing, and I think that's where my passion is, at least right now, at least today. Mm. I'd much rather be the best songwriter in the world than the best guitarist in the world. Yeah. But I just want to be the best songwriter I can be because I need to write songs. As, as corny as that sounds, I feel it, and they tap me on the shoulder and mm. they go, write me. And <laughs> I very much think, I don't, I don't write them, I channel them, and it goes, hello, write, I've got, I've got a song here for you. Um, and I'll go, oh, I can't be bothered, but fine. And I'll be like, oh, I just want to watch Drag Race, but then this song's here. Yeah, like, yeah. It's not necessarily a fun, a fun time. But it's kind of like a necessity, and then I feel like I channel that through my lens. Hmm. Oh, I sound so pretentious. I don't. I don't think it is, honestly. As avant garde as we might come across together today, <laughs> I totally get what you're on about. Honestly, yeah. I feel it every time a little idea comes in. Mm. The moment I try and play it off, like oh, I'll write it later, there's just no it's chance. Go to somebody else. <laughs> yeah, it's like it's either gone or every moment it's scratching away. It's going. Yeah. No, you've got that idea. Remember, mm -hmm. it's like oh, I was going to watch this film. Yeah. Souls on again for the 19th time <laughs> can do that tomorrow but it does it, it comes through you and the authenticity what you spoke about then that's a big discovery for me just being real with yourself being really honest at every moment with self first mm -hmm. and going what's best for me right now what do I want right now and being able to just create yeah. and an idea come I know exactly what you mean when you say it comes through you mm. my most contrived work is when I'm thinking it out and I'm forcing it and I'm pushing mm. it but when something's hit me like I've had an emotional time recently we've had a couple of a scandal and a death and lots of little things in my life that give me a moment of clarity and I got a beat sent through so one of my friends said I don't know what I can say to you man I know you're going through struggles mm. I know you like writing. Have a bit of music. Oh, how lovely is that? How beautiful. That's just what a, a good really friend. good friend. And I, that was the most powerful thing somebody could have done for me at that moment. Mm. And I did. I just sat with it, went on a treadmill with it. I spent the day with it. Oh. And everything was just pouring out. It was like a free write. And I felt so healed after it. So I didn't think about anything. Mm. It was a conscious stream just flowing out. And as avant-garde as that can sound or feel, it's just truth. It was just shooting straight out. You look back at it and you get quite emotional. Because I've got a lot of feminine energy in me. I am definitely a, a culmination. Mm. I've got masculinity sides about me, but I'm quite grounded. I like to protect. I've got a very protective vibe. But I'm very sensitive. I love the beauty of life. I get very emotional. And... When I'm writing and I look back at it and I've said something by accident, what I wanted to say, it fills me up. I'm like, oh, that was it. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> but in a, it, it's powerful as well. It's very mm. powerful. You go, that was it. I'm going to help people with that now. That's going to work. Yes. Right. Writing's power, isn't it? Words. Mm. Words don't mean very much on their own. They're just words. But sometimes you string them in a certain way and it speaks to something so much mm. higher. Yeah. Or something you can't explain otherwise. Mm. You can never some some things you cannot explain but you can only feel them. And the words can help people feel them. 
Yeah. It's like, is certain affirmations, a few words just put in a certain way in a sentence yeah. and it completely concludes how you've been feeling, what you've been going through, yeah. where it is, I get very frantic when I'm very emotional mm. and going through hard times. I try and put that across to my partner Chrissy or my dad or whoever's around. I'm like, but, but, uh, 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 uh. Mm. <laughs> and then I'll see it out there or I'll say it myself or just put, a, f a sentence together and when it goes that's it that's the thing i feel calm from that mm. i feel everything's been put forward in that point mm. one of my favorite ones is probably either be the person you needed when you were younger mm -hmm. i love that quote mm. because i was desperate for a mentor when i was younger i had no guidance mm -hmm. i had no help and just thinking about right be that person always thinking of a mini mikey out there who needs mm -hmm advice or guidance in in podcasts in your music in just your general being mm -hmm. smiling at somebody yeah. be that person that you know you needed then yeah. i always reflect back to that one yeah it's like embodying mm. what you want to see in the world or, but, or be the change you want to see I yes. yeah always gets me yes. that one because i've I listened to a um, podcast recently have you seen philosophize me no it's really interesting and they had one episode where they were talking about philosophers on their deathbeds wow. and some of them talk about they wish they would have changed their famous quotes or what they'd said um one of the interesting joseph campbell spoke about um follow your bliss but actually he said and on his deathbed he would have changed that to follow your blisters and that's where true mm. happiness comes from go through your pain so it's, it's cool isn't like it that, yeah. really interesting so it made me go and reflect to a few quotes and just think could that be altered is there a way of changing that concept but be the change you want to see. I've thought of it. I've really sat on it. I go, that's just like the perfect quote. It really is so mm. powerful. There's nothing I would have, no words I would have added or changed that's in it. that. You can preach all you like, but yeah, you practicing. <laughs> yeah, completely. Go, go on then. So we've we've touched into your childhood and where where you've grown from. I'm very excited to know what's coming up because you've had this revelation, <laughs> you've had this new mindset and you're literally moving. Yeah. You're going somewhere else. I'm a, I'm a bit gutted because I feel you could be a very good friend in my life, see more of each other. But I mean, what an excuse to go down to Brighton. Come and see me. It's Bristol, Brighton. Brighton. Bristol. Tomato, tomato. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. What's brought this full shift along as well? Anything in particular? Yeah. I mean, when I think about it, it's, really it's really gonna solidify the kind of big change that's happening mm. it's like a like a big version of little things and a big mm. embodiment um i've just always been drawn to brighton um, yeah. i'd not i'd not been there and then i met some people in amsterdam that were from wow. brighton and i was like oh my god i've always been drawn to brighton <laughs> um i ended up hanging out there a lot um and i just fell in love with the place it just felt right and it mm. felt cool and creative seaside i need to be by the seaside of course um, yeah big creative scene and as much as i love nottingham something in me it really is like an intuition thing i just feel like my people are there mm. i really need to meet some more people a, a bit more like me and a bit some just new people new creatives yeah yeah i'm going on my own i want to be on my own i want to be thrown into that wow. discomfort yeah and I, I need that it's going to be hard mm. i'm going to miss my parents i'm really close to my parents um, but I need it and I just I just I'm supposed to be there right now mm. even if it's for six months it's yeah do you think have you put any times on it or forward thinking or are you, you gonna go and just be you just be. yeah uh, six months well, I've got a six months rent nice um see how it goes see how covid goes but I see myself just living in lots of different places like mm. Barcelona, have you Vienna, travelled a lot? Berlin. Not very much. Covid put a bit of a stop to it all. Of course it did. Brexit. Did, did you, I mean before all Covid terms though, did you go anywhere? Have you been, not with your music or anything? No, not really. Oh uh, bless you. And I don't know, really, because I'm only 21 like. Yeah cool. I keep looking across like the conversation we've had, I think it's two very old souls bonding. Yeah. <laughs> like 40. <laughs> yeah, no, I've been, been to a few places, but not as much as I'd like to. Mm. I kind of ended up, well, you end up doing like a, 
you've got all the local stuff in Nottingham there's always local stuff going on and there's mm. always kind of a reason to stay at home I got a job I was a songwriting tutor for a few years wow which is really great what were you doing there was that a confetti uh, it was inspire youth arts I oh, know it, yeah. I've Such a great there. company. Such a, and they look after their artists so well. And it's all artist-led wow. songwriting workshops. So I was, you know Nina Smith? Yes, I was yeah. her assistant. Oh, cool. Still, still don't like calling. Yeah. She works for me now. <laughs> you go, girl. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so what yeah. sort of things would you be doing in these workshops? Uh, they were like after-school clubs. So yeah. we'd just let them write. That's yeah. so nice. And I teach it so differently now, um, if I was in charge. Did you have icebreakers and then workshops? Yeah, little and games, and they'd, we'd take them to the recording studio and oh, wow. teach them, yeah, yeah, all sorts. The, and it was really rewarding, and hopefully they enjoyed it as well. There is no greater feeling, do you know, when you, you've been working on a piece of writing with a class, and then one of them comes up to you and then pours the heart out through this piece of yeah. writing. So I, I, I've had so many wonderful little anecdotes and stories mm. of that. I'm always brought into the, the naughty boy schools, to be honest. Okay. I go to a lot of PRUs, so pupil referral units. Right. A lot of um, schools are academies now. So when you academise it, you've got like five schools yeah. and then each one that's been naughty just gets sent to this one school in the middle. And that I go and teach them classes. A lot of the time, it's been to primaries and everywhere, yeah, but yeah. they really have been the best best experiences like i've gone in I'll, I'll tell you this one moment i went in for the this is the first place i ever went it was in nottingham mm. and uh i walked through the door and this teacher seen me at a festival performing poetry <laughs> and i just saw her at the peripherals and she was crying her eyes out so this poem it's about 10 minutes but it's a story and it's a football related poem and mm -hmm. the masculine energy of how me my dad and my granddad all bonded over football and this um, strong love together. And I really love the men in my life as, a, as well as the women in my life. But we've had just a big bond, big strong bond. And my granddad got cancer. And I remember I just wrote this 10 minute poem, but out in a day. And I created the film the next day oh, and we put it all together. I performed this and this woman at the end of the uh, festival came over and was like, right, that's it, come on, grab me. And went, you've got to come to my school. So within it, I was like, I got kicked out of my schools. You don't want me in your school. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to bring chaos. Mm. She's like, no, no, you're coming in. So I went to this school in Knotts and on the day she was like, by the way, it's a prue, so you can pretty much wear what you want, yeah. <laughs> do what you want. It's like, okay, I never really heard of a prue. And uh, I walked in, she'd give me, a big me up massively, panicking, sweating buckets. Yeah. Walks in, goes, I am, I'm your poet today. And the lad here, Kanan, went, fuck off, mate. <laughs> Just, I, I, that was it. Nothing more humbling. My dream was over. <laughs> but uh, I, I brushed it off. I went, ha, ha, ha. <laughs> Performed a poem. And it was about sort of prison and substances and quite dark and deeper things. Mm. And he went, you don't mind swearing. He went, that's not poetry. That's fucking sick. <laughs> <laughs> and then he um, actually grabbed his bag and went into it and pulled out some scrunched up paper. And the teacher went, he's, he never wrote a thing, ever. He would not write a thing. And he'd been concealing it and not shown anybody in the two years that he'd been there. So he grabbed it out. We put like a hard trap beat on or a drill beat on. But it was incredible. Um, he was talking about his mum being beaten by his stepdad. Again, drugs and loads of mm. emotional think roller coaster of a ride that he's been on for a 14 year old. And then all his mates, the naughty boys in the class, got up and started hugging him. Like, <laughs> this is, and I went, uh, this is poetry. <laughs> oh, and we had the greatest session ever. It was so beautiful from that moment on. And I did feel for the three, four years that I've been going in and out of schools now from that, that was a catalyst of why I carried on. I loved it. Did you have any moments, anecdotal moments, where you thought, oh, I've touched this person in this session? Really Three helped times, you. Yeah, I wasn't there for long enough to really get in to the the gritty. Nitty -gritty yeah, stuff. I get yeah. Um, and you're only there for about an hour after school, and um, 
a lot of time everyone's off doing their own thing and I would teach it so differently now. I teach it much more intuitively. Mm. Um, but yeah, the, the stuff that comes out in the songs is so important. And mm. as that teacher, you are facilitating and holding space for that expression. Mm. And it's your job to make that safe, to make it welcoming and judgment free. Mm. Um, and what responsibility and what like an honor to, yeah. to do that for someone. And I wish I had that when I was a kid. And mm. all I think every kid needs an outlet. Yeah, like completely. That. It's just so so powerful. And some of the things they write are incredible. Mm. And I learn more from them than they learn from me, I'm sure. Yeah, they yeah. Taught me so much just about about life and about music and songwriting. Kids just know. You do. You learn the most from teaching, don't you? Mm. And about yourself, how yeah. you feel, how you are. It's come into my writing a lot yeah. and helped me on my journey. Seeing a lot of mini-me's as well around give me a, quite an understanding mm. of what I went through. Mm. Yeah, and sometimes the way they see you is very yeah. interesting because these are like what, what I was doing, what artist-led workshops, so there'd be builders. Tori's a songwriter, Tori's done this, she's going to come and teach you. So they've almost put you on a bit of a pedestal. Yeah, sometimes yeah. the kids see you as like a someone a bit ooh, godlike they're a bit, figure they're a bit special yeah 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 but um, do you have to fill out do you have to do autographs oh no <laughs> I, I remember we went to Leicester City because I am the poet in residence there or oh, whatever but I had a queue of kids getting autographs so I was like uh, don't be daft stop <laughs> yeah. what do you want here <laughs> I just kept going right come on then just writing it out going this is a hilarious yeah. but yeah I kind of I, didn't, I don't know if I like that, because I was like, no, what you've enjoyed today is the experience you've had. You've all had a moment yeah. from it. Don't pedestal people, is what I felt. It yeah. was all strange. You get, yeah. Do you get that feeling? Of course, yeah. And I've, I've never had to do an autograph for someone I've taught, thankfully. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, they, they can be such a mirror, though. Yeah. And the way that they see you and the way you see them, and when you make it so you're on the same level, and mm. you find that understanding... Mm. and yeah it's a mirror yeah and the space that creates is so powerful and you see them grow yeah and then you watch the they do a show at the end of the year oh wow it's that's like, so cool yeah so I, I've, <laughs> not, I've not been doing it for a year now i stopped to do other things but it was so rewarding do you think you'd like to take that into brighton with you maybe Maybe mm. I've been doing different work. I've been doing freelance social media stuff. Um, oh, cool! And to be fair, it's been helpful not doing music for a living. Yeah. Because too much music, and I'm not happy. Mm. It's really sad for someone that wants to do music for a living. But um, I'd definitely consider it. I'd love to do some kind of more holistic, intuitive, with mm. a bit more, maybe a bit more of a spiritual edge. But I want it to be accessible. Yeah. If I was to do that, but I could I could equally see myself teaching like an ecstatic dance class. That'd be or cool. I've seen ecstatic class. dance before. Something, maybe something more like that would be more my bag at the moment. <laughs> but we, I feel sure, quite I um, similar to you in being a completionist. Yeah. I like trying things out now. Whereas when it was, oh, you're a poet. Mm. That's it now. Yeah. Dosh. When I got into filmmaking and I've gone, oh, this spins a plate over mm. here now. It takes the pressure off of yeah. here. And then when you've been doing that for a while, you can have a little sneaky look back at when the writing side of things. Yeah. And then you go, oh, I quite enjoy beat making. I've, enjoy I've always listened to lo-fi. I've got logic. Yeah. Why not start in lockdown? So I've been giving that a go. And the more you add into your existence, the more it feeds the other sides of your passions in my mm. eyes. So, sure. yeah, uh, that's where I've got to in what I want to do with myself mm. is little bits of school jobs here and there because yeah. they, they do fulfil you. But when it's all that, it's just too much pressure. Mm -hmm. It feels if this collapses, everything collapses. Yeah, and it's almost restrictive because... Mm. Because you've built such a thing around it um, and you are perceived in a certain way. Um, perception is important because how you perceive yourself and how other people perceive you, it's how you engage with the world. Mm. Um, it sounds silly, but recently I took m the music part out of my Instagram username. Yeah, yeah. I just just went from Tory Sheard music to Tory Sheard. And as small as that is, that just freed me up to post about other things. Mm, and I did mm. like a little reintroduction post and go, look, I love music still, but there's also all of these other parts of me that I want to explore. Mm. And my creativity 
wants to happen in so many different ways. Mm. So instead of trying to force that into a song when it's not happening, it wants to dance. Yeah. Or it wants to cook. Or it wants to paint a fence. <laughs> I don't know. It's or perfect, it to, yeah. Or it wants to integrate itself into my everyday life. So yeah. I want to write an email and just... But, but write a really beautiful email. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think you have become very self-aware. And I think that is the key to happiness, is learning self mm. first. Really working out who you are as an individual. Because for what we're talking about... I I do another podcast called Words and Wisdom with my friend and I always put sort of a precursor up of I'm not preaching to people here I'm not saying everyone needs to change Mm. I'm just speaking to people that are looking for difference and change in their life and that's what I'm putting my words out for and towards and for me I just know what works for me now and it is that movement and completionist and trying everything out and not being stuck to a job but I think it really works for some people who love structure in their life mm. and want to just be doing nine to five and ha- live simplicity yeah. and work in that way, I think they can exist in that. And before I wouldn't accept it, I thought everyone needed to experience what I'm going yeah. through and how I live and what I see. So I think that was a big learning for me, was just accepting yourself, understanding yeah. yourself and knowing what operates best for you. Yeah. That makes and, sense. And then accepting that other people... Are completely different. Some people are just so happy with a nine to five. Yeah. Go home, love their family. So simple. I I almost envy that sometimes because they're, oh, just, totally. they're just content. Yeah. <laughs> simple. And we can learn from them. And some people like us are sometimes so, wow, we're creative people. Let's go, go, go. Let's do all these. And we've always got projects on. Yeah. Chill. Yeah, completely. Chill. And when we're both overthinkers... Mm and have this essence about us and in that book power of now we're talking about before says that's one of the greatest diseases of humans have to conquer is thinking but in a balanced term it does make us create the best we can create especially in a place of pain when i had a breakup before and i was really attached to love it was Mm. so important to me i attracted that into my life so we were both just like huge forces of attachment to love and when that ended eventually i could not hack it i could not deal with it Mm. but it made this i was over overthinking overthinking but when it came into the paper I was really proud of what I'd, I'd created from it and the cathartic tool I found from it. So even though I don't advocate you want to think more or a bit overthinking's mm. good, it's definitely made the best of my art at times. Sure. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I want to challenge you a little bit though. Yeah, that's kind of that love it. Would that art not come from the not thinking part? Would that art not just come from being in your body and being in your emotions without being attached to them? The thinking is that not the attachment part mm. and then when you write from your heart that's not thinking mm. you might think use your logic brain to refine that i don't so, know no i think you're right i think a big part of it was half going through all the pain so mm. maybe the writing wasn't at its best when i was thinking it through mm. but the amount of pain that i went through with the overthinking yeah created the beauty that just came out onto See, the paper if you yeah. that makes sense so when i broke up with my first love i would say real powerful one, force yeah. that was just to, whereas friends before in a few weeks you'd see them again with a new girl or you'd see one of my friends that'd be on dating sites and whatever and you think how are you doing this, man? <laughs> All I can think about is her name in the lights, <laughs> in the clouds. <laughs> for, but for months, and it was just vacuous and endless hole, which was consuming me every day, waking up thinking of what's the point. I've, I've been to suicide before. I was on the absolute very last limit. I mean, that's what sent me on my spiritual journey as well. You got cracked over. Yeah, got, honestly. I I typed it on Reddit, easiest ways to die, because I was I wanted to finish it all, but the only thing that kept me on the planet was a guy and I'll never be able to find him again, but he said before you do anything stupid, mate, and I, I can say anything on this podcast. He goes, "Why don't you try a psychedelic?" <laughs> 
and I did. That was it. I went oh, off and I was like, I know where to locate. Yeah, I'll sort it. I went and had a psychedelic, to be honest. And it, I say that saved my life. It really did. Yeah. But that pain, the constant, the thinking, the arduous path I was on, after learning how good you can be when you're not in that place created that beauty, created that art, if that makes sense. Mm. So yeah, I don't I hate that I've had it in my life and have it in my presence and I've had to learn from it because it is that sort of cliche, you don't know the sunlight today without the rain. Mm. And because I've had so much polarity of them both, it's made my life quite a beautiful esoteric existence really, because I've lived it so strongly. Yeah, mm. that's how I feel. I'm glad I've experienced it all. Yeah, you, sometimes you... It's, God, hard, it's hard to say everything happens for a reason because maybe it doesn't, but mm. when you can grow from it so much, you wouldn't be where you are if it was if it yeah. for that horrible pain. Fully, and I think, I truly do believe, like, in some which way, the person I am, the character, the yourself with our lyrics, because we've been able to report back to that and use our hearts to write it, it's helped other people on the way. I really do yeah. believe that. And that's your job, you're a healer. Yes, and that's uh, taking that because other, I'm just reflecting to other artists and listening to their interviews and there all seem to be a common theme of big thinkers or constant thinkers and they've been through all those emotions and managed to channel it out. Mm. I mean, The Streets for me, Mike Skinner, Dry Your Eyes Mate is one of the best songs of all time and he just managed to pick a moment like a breakup and speak to so many people mm. on that platform. So it's powerful what you can do. Mm, um, sure. Yeah, I, I, I envy my dad. I definitely want to be <laughs> Buddhist, more Buddhist and learn from that. But I can maybe utilise my overthinking nature. Of course. Yeah. Mm. Use what you got. That's it, yeah. <laughs> Amen, sister. And so got this podcast then. What what we're going for here? We got a name. How far in the process I are we? A name. I don't know if I want to talk about it yet because okay. it's not set in stone. So um, if it doesn't come to fruition, you'd feel then like I've got no, no account. Yeah. Really, yeah. No, I definitely. It's an option, though. Yeah, maybe I could tell you more about the vision. I was going to say that because I was saying in hypothetics, if mm. one was to start a podcast, <laughs> yeah. What would what avenues would you like to go down? So vision, vision wise, I I want to. I want to share. Sharing is, I feel like how, what my soul wants to do, and it's how I feel that my place in the world is mm. as a sharer. Because I'm naturally, I naturally want to share things, whether it's an outfit or a song mm. or an mm. idea, um, and I want to have a platform, whether it's Instagram or just a whole community vibe. Um, and I want us to talk about ideas and I want us to talk about what makes us yes. excited and mm. fizzy and I want I want I want us to use the power of social media that could be very toxic mm. to harness it and how can we use this for love and how can we mm. use this for connection and for sharing um, I want to talk to people I want to make a platform for other people's viewpoints and ideas um and they'll be i want to share my songs as well yeah yeah i want to perform i want to be on stage um i enjoy chatting shit yeah i want to talk <laughs> well, you were um, the pro of it right here yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but i wanted to be inclusive and even though i'm very into my spirituality i don't oh. want it to be Mm, I don't want it to sometimes like the whole ego and the spirituality thing. I mm. don't want it to be We're doing conscious things. This is a conscious platform. Yeah, yeah, because when you try to do that it That's not it, it feels saturated. Yeah, yeah if it, the amount of times I've gone I want to write a song with a message Yeah, yeah, and you can't because it's it not, doesn't come out as it's real. It's not authentic. Yeah, you just end up preaching um, And you're not embodying that um I want us all to share, and uh, I want to, I think I can hold space, but in a very creative way. I can just, it's a big, it's a big vision, and there's going to be lots of 
part to it but this is all part of the whole journey of moving away from just being a musician and more into being an artist mm -hmm. and just being playful playing mm. just being playful enjoying the whole process That's of it, it all yeah yeah instead of putting yourself in a box I, I, yeah it feels beautifully sporadic yeah and all over the place and which is moving yeah it mm. just needs its container but it's it's growing as i'm growing the idea mm. comes in and the more that i learn um it's more of like a feeling it just feels like something that needs to happen instead of the way i was being before which was very right logically what do we need to do to yeah from here yeah to here but now i'm very i'm really trying to tune in and i'm going right okay what feels right hmm. what does my soul need today and how does it want to be expressed huh. what feels like the right thing to do and how can we best honor what we need right now that's a stunning journey you're on <laughs> it's a beautiful path yeah. you've embarked on and i'm not yeah. saying i'm there or that i found any answers but it's, it's growing. Like constant dissolving of my sense of self and mm. then the rebuilding and then you go around in circles you're here you end up dropping things that don't serve you anymore mm. nothing and then you add in things that work better yeah and then you have to go around again you have to drop the, <laughs> drop the bullshit mm. and then pick up the other things and i think it um it, there is a diagram of this. It's called uh, the Hero's Journey. Have, no you, have you heard of it? No. I'll send you that. It's okay. really cool. It's again, it's Joseph Campbell. Right. But it explains the hero's journey. And any film that you watch, literally nearly anything, you could decipher it and dissect it into the hero's journey. Uh. So you see this sort of bit of, wit, like, the starting point, then the, like, painful or the, mm. the problem, and then he goes towards the conundrum sure. and sort of solutions yeah. comes back round with this new piece of wisdom yeah. goes back round and it's all this this yeah. complete journey also, and i think we're constantly on it yeah constant remembering and forgetting that's mm. what i always say we that's remember lovely. who we are remember what we are remember why we're here get lost again <laughs> then you remember again and then you forget again <laughs> and you'd never constantly remember i i mean I'm just interested to know then, um, you spoke a little bit about social media. Mm. Have you had a rocky road with that and a tempestuous sort of relationship with social media? I really love social media. Yeah. Uh, I definitely spend too much time on it, but social media is also my job. Um, it's like 70% of how I earn my money is doing social media management for other people. But I think it's such a beautiful job because I'm really good at communication, I think. And I'm helping people communicate in the most authentic way possible. Mm. And I'm promoting things that I believe in. And then as far as my own platform goes, um, I think it's, there's so much potential in social media that we still need to learn how to harness. And it's very tricky because it's addictive and it's designed to keep you on there for as long as possible. Mm. Um, but... I don't know. I've had a few messages recently from people that have said, Tori, your, your, your Instagram stories have really cheered me up. Yeah, or yeah. Or something like that. And if that's all we can do in lockdown to spread a little sunshine. Yeah, I've not, I've not really had a bad journey with it, apart from the fact that I am probably addicted to it. Yeah. <laughs> not to generalise, but as a peoples, we seem to not be very good at being nuanced with things so we have to say it's really good or it's really bad mm. and no gray area conversation coming through with it and again i think you can utilize it you can turn it into your experience yeah and not be its product but let that become a product to yeah. you and I, I think that's a real new learning that i've been on with it feeling i had to be seeing mm -hmm. i had to create and oh. put stuff out all the time and really, what is it? It's a little platform for me to show a little bit of myself yeah. that I'm proud of to people. And yeah, I've been caught up in the figures. I've been sure, caught up in sure. the contrasts and comparing and mm. look, so many different levels and scales of it. But I really, truly have genuinely tried to start manicuring it and making it into my own thing. Yeah. And I'm realising I don't need to see what everybody's up to. Mm. We spoke a little bit before uh, the podcast and... One thing in my DNA when I was younger, I was I got addictive qualities. So I really struggle with certain things and how to balance 
and volume things. So when I've been on social media and just had an influx of everything on there, it wasn't healthy for me. I was looking at nudity in a certain way and it would be a constant feed through or food and anything. But when I've gone, right, know what works for you, know what channels for yeah. you, and I've, I've found that mute button is very handy. Oh, we love that mute That's button. a helpful button nowadays. So I've, I've put blinkers on yeah. for my own vision and, and fulfilled that, and it's just worked out a treat. Yeah. I feel differently in my day. I feel happy yeah. in, in my pursuit on there. Yeah. So, yeah, and I'm also, because I put them blinkers on and I see predominantly music or yeah. art and people promoting cool yeah. stuff that I like, I'm not over-consuming it. I'm not over on it because I feel, oh, I've done that now. Whereas when you've got the widespread of everything, you're like, a boob, <laughs> something new. Oh, yeah, there's a, I want them. They're cool shoes. And, and it's triggering it's that just, addictive yeah, thing in your brain. Always there. So, yeah, yeah really learn to channel it mm. and use it for yourself. Yeah. You're in control of what you consume. Mm. As much as we can blame the algorithm, we can yeah, blame yeah. the addictiveness of it, you're in control. And that's your space of the internet. Mm. And you're spending time on it. Make it, make it inspiring. Yeah. I think my friend spoke about this because we always hang around friends that think it's an evil algorithm that's out to get you. But actually, my friend did a little thing where he'd type in cats for a, a week on YouTube and everything. Yeah. And all his feed was shown was cool cats. Yeah. It's not that dangerous, is it, really? It's a, so, it's a free app. Exactly. What can you expect from it? <laughs> so, uh, like YouTube or so on, if you're having constant influx mm. of things that are telling you to consume, are telling you to be better, are telling you not good enough and so on, it's because you're feeding that. That is literally mm. what you're putting into your machine. <laughs> it's what you're feeding your algorithm of. So start channeling. Yeah. And your brain's like the algorithm as well. Yeah, yeah. Whatever you what you're thinking about will amplify. Have you watched the uh, the social dilemma? Oh god, yeah. It's good in it. That was it scared me. I was terrified. It really did. Yeah. What Tristan Harrit? No, that's I can't remember the guy that made the documentary, but he really is on a mission now, isn't he? I don't uh, know. It, it, just meaning like he's seeing the the dark side of it oh, all, sure, sure. and he's just he's gone out. I'm not comfortable in this. Mm -hmm. I really don't feel happy, and he I've, I love that he's gone out there to sort of pioneer this change. Yeah, so we, important. We need it. We need the wake up. Hmm. Do you watch lots of documentaries? Listen to a lot of podcasts. Yeah. Yeah. I try. Try to do the documentaries, but um, trying to look at less screens. So if I can listen to. Okay. Yeah. Listen. I do a little good. coloring book. Brill. Colour in because it helps me focus on what I'm listening to. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm, I mean, what podcast would you sort of push me down the ro road of if you went this Ooh. one? I my favourite podcast is the Witch Bitch Amateur Hour. Wow, and it's about the witch bitch. The witch bitch amateur. That's out. cool. It's so brilliant. And Who's the hosts? Uh, their names are Macy and Charlie. I cool. Don't, I don't know. Is it is it an amateur podcast or is it quite a, a it's well? It's quite established now. Yeah. It's in they're in Texas, I think, um, and it's just <laughs> about it's about witchcraft. Wow. Um, but they they go like right where amateurs we're sharing our journey as we go, mm. which is quite inspiring because they're not claiming to be anything. They're just sharing what they know, and it's really accessible. What do you know about witches then? <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is a whole whole different rabbit hole. Um, witchcraft, yeah, is such a beautiful thing, and it is so misunderstood. Okay, uh, and there are so many stereotypes and. Is this because of Hollywood? Is it ruined yeah. with witchcraft? Yeah. Well, the Christians ruined witchcraft. Yeah. Um, I think the word witch has meant so many different things in so many different cultures, so it's such a loaded word. Um, I think S Stevie Nicks or someone said, a witch is a woman in her power. Mm. Um, and if you look at it, at least in an Eastern, no, Western, we are Western, like European, English. Um, I'm trying to think how I can explain it properly. Uh, the witches or the pagans, or the, the healers. Mm. They were just hugging trees. Yeah. They were just, they were just making, making herbal remedies. They were just doing, doing their thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, and they were persecuted for it. Mm. They weren't 
doing curses or maybe they were but they weren't doing anything they were just being they yeah. were just being maybe they were like a, an old lady doing some healing or somebody that had a strange looking cat um they were killed um mm. because this isn't that long ago is it not even that long ago no no and these were very often women 1800s i think or even like no 16 i think 1612 so was the pendle witch trials I just find it... But I think yeah. it's still very recently. I, I'm going to say that re realistically, because if somebody lives now at 100 years old, that's only five people old away. Or nearly, like, let's go... Okay, you know what I mean? Yeah. If uh, somebody lived to 100 now, then that's five people away, really, yeah. in, in terms of consciousness, mm. in terms of new. So yeah. that that's not very far. No. Yeah, and what happens is that... The whole, well, the whole, I think it was Christianity came in and was like, right, these are the rules now. This is the religion now. Um, and you have all this fear, all this fear of the unknown and fear of the not normal. And um, mm. I suppose they didn't have as much scientific understanding. So they would blame things on people that they didn't understand. Um, were, were men healers and women witches? Is that, is that but doing the same thing you were talking about healers yeah. i presume there were healers in those times yeah but a but healer were, might be called a witch so you have male witches yeah oh i didn't know yeah I, well, I, again of i course, think yeah, it's the witch such doctors. an ambiguous word well a doctor could be a woman yeah no, no, I, I know in these times i'm just thinking back to history i wasn't allowed in that class <laughs> <laughs> yeah. that was the one they kept me out of but I'm, I'm definitely very interested in this parts of history i, I do know quite a bit about more the viking eras yeah just always been very fascinated on fascinated on that but witches i must say my knowledge is Hollywood version yeah. of which is all I know. So drop it, drop what you know. Yeah, cool. Tell this, me more then. <laughs> this, this vision, this view of the witch, yeah, um, has become a really powerful word, and it's almost been reclaimed, and it's been used as a like, as a, we've turned it into a positive because mm. it's only really the media and the patriarchal society that's made it into something with a negative connotation hmm. so a lot of people now um are looking into this practice and a lot of the time it's just an intuitive nature-based spirituality hmm. uh, you've got wiccan wiccan is a religion mm -hmm. witchcraft is more of an umbrella term and you can have many things underneath that so i like to call myself a witch because hmm. It helps me understand my ancestry. I believe in nature. I have a very intuitive practice. And a lot of it, I'm looking into like old English traditions and old Cornish traditions, old Celtic traditions. And it feels really close to home. Mm. And all you're doing is looking at what you've got around you. You're connecting with it, you're respecting it. And maybe you'll use some of it to have, to make a certain intention happen. Mm -hmm. So like a spell. Yeah might just be lighting a candle with a certain intention. Okay. And so much of it kind of links into the modern manifestation culture. Hmm. So if I dress a red candle with some rose quartz and some rose oil and I carve into the candle love and I light the candle, hmm. that's a love spell. Yeah. And when you do it with intention, how is that different from manifestation? Hmm. See, I, I'm, I'm, again, I've, I've only been learning about it for a year, so I'm by no means an expert. But it's such... Because you can just collect things, as long as you're not culturally appropriating and as long as you're respecting the origins of all these things. Hmm. A lot of witches will have things from ancient Greece. They might have a certain goddess that they feel connected to. Some of it might come from hoodoo. Hmm. Some of it might come from their own ancestry. Um, it's just, it feels really liberating to learn about because my ancestors, who will have been English and Irish, probably were pagan at mm. some point before Catholicism and everything. Um, and I spent a lot of time reading about Buddhism and Hinduism when I was a bit younger. Mm. And something always felt like it was missing for me personally. Yeah. Um, and I think it's just because it felt far away. Mm. But by looking at, Pagan, and paganism's got a bad rep as well. Yeah. Because pagans are just 
represented really badly. It's just nature. We, I was going to say, I, when I get in. paganism in my head, I just think earthly people. Yeah, That's all some I... people think like like th that they eat babies. Oh, wow. No, I've not I heard that one. Do, yeah, <laughs> there's a lot of bad people in the world. That's, <laughs> yeah. that's the thing. I mean, what we probably do as a media is when somebody bad commits a bad act, mm. they'll attach them to the labels that they've yeah. defined themselves as, and whatever it is they're attached to gets the bad name. Yeah, um, and we generalise things. So for me, spirituality, religion. Any, any form of being and any belief system that you put yourself behind, if it's committed in a beautiful way, a loving way, a truthful way, then all of them can coexist mm. properly. It's just bad people that commit atrocious acts in the, the name of whatever. It's a bad person. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I, 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 I slip it down that simplicity of a road for mm. me. Because when I was looking into The Secret... I really liked yeah. what I put out in the universe. It attracted back to me. Yeah. I don't know if that's true. I don't know if that's fact or um, real. Mm. But because it actually worked in my life and I started doing it, maybe it was just filling my brain with positive thinking mm. and channeling that for myself in a scientific term. I was giving myself the right energy. Yeah. It, that's what came out, that's what come to fruition, that's what manifestation yeah. showed to me. So if it's real or not, what it implements and what it does to my life is real. It helps. And it that's helps, the important thing. So in any religion, any system, I mm. think we can take the good parts from it and be a good person with it. And that uh, that's what I tried to... I've got um, this tattoo on my arm, the golden rule. And there's one rule that rules all rules, is the golden rule. And it's uh, treat others as you wish to be yeah. treated. But then I listened to a Matthew McConaughey podcast. And he's a religious man. He's a, he's a fantastic human. I love the way he talks. But when he spoke about religion, it very much reflected how I feel with religion. Is I've looked at Buddhism and Hinduism and Christianity, all the isms, and just handpicked bits that I thought, Ooh, I've not even thought of that before, yeah. but that's stunningly cool. Mm. I'm going to incorporate that in my life. And you can do that with spiritualities and practices. Yeah. So it's good to just hand select and become yeah. your own moral compass out of it. Mm. Is that sort of the road you're on? Yeah, for sure. And um, with the whole learning about witchcraft, mm. intuition is such a huge thing. Um, because it's the connection to your surroundings and the connection to yourself. Um, the goddess idea has been a really mm. important part in the whole divine feminine and tapping into that energy when the whole society and the whole way I've lived for a long time has been very in the masculine and because it's such an intuitive practice mm. you're going with what feels right and yeah. you're setting intentions and you're being in your body mm. and you're asking yourself what it needs mm. that's been my main thing and i really believe we've got this ancient wisdom yeah in us and it's in our being and we are not taught to connect with it mm. um but when you tap in we in our bodies we know things mm. you do like as soon as you've committed a, a poor act that didn't fit your moral compass it sits in my stomach for ages yeah i just I overthink about it, yeah. I've, but it's mainly the feeling that I get yeah. that I'm most uncomfortable with. Your body responds to everything and we store yeah. everything that happens to us mm. in our bodies and in our different energy centres and like a lot, a lot of women store trauma in their hips mm. or you might, different types of trauma in different places and we're, we're, as a culture we're so not, we're so in our minds and mm. we're so not in our bodies. Yeah. Yeah, I feel the same again when I've done something lovely for somebody. Like the other day, I went and just got my dad some beers. Mm. Because, just yeah. there. But it felt right, it felt cool. And even on the way home, the sun's shining now, so everyone's in a better spirit, a better mind. And just having a little connection. An old lady on the park, yeah. hey, hope you're all right. Genuinely meaning it, though. Mm -hmm. Sort of having a, taking a moment out may have really helped her day. And you get a buzz like no other. Mm. It really it fills you up. And you're sort of being a bit selfish with that in a unselfish of ways. But it, you're doing it to get that feeling. Mm. And that that's com 
that's a beautiful thing. I don't think you have to feel wrong in that pursuit of going out, create, is it random acts of kindness? Yeah. But get having a feeling from it, because I think Friends did an episode of this, is an act ever um, unselfish yeah. when you're putting it out yeah. there? And I, I think Phoebe gave away a baby, didn't she? In the oh, yeah, Friends, yeah, yeah. that was how, and she was like, oh, I think I've answered the question, because she didn't feel good after that, obviously. And I thought that was quite beautiful. But really, on your day-to-days, going and randomly getting someone a coffee or offering to pay for something for someone, you're rewarding yourself in that, and you're feeling good in your day. Mm. Whereas when I've got worked up over something daft and my anger builds up, you, you're literally poisoning your body. It fills up with cortisol, mm. certain toxins inside of yourself, and you can feel it. You, you get knackered after it. So... You've got to be quite conscious and thoughtful about what you're fueling your body with. Yeah. And that can be straight away the feelings that you get and yeah. allowing to experience. Yeah. Horrible, isn't it? Oh, it speaks mm. so loudly when mm. you listen to it. It tells you what you want to eat. Yeah. It tells yeah. you what you need, it tells you when you need to sleep. It also tells you, like, maybe something's logically the right thing to do, but there might just be something in you that's saying no. Mm. Or your body might be saying a really open yes and it feels a certain decision can feel expansive and you're, it's lit in your being, it's mm. open. Mm. But maybe something that's not quite aligned, you feel closed. Mm. But it's just listening to it. <laughs> it's hard. It's I think hard. there's, a, there's a, a beautiful song in the making out of this, <laughs> isn't there? Maybe we should collab. Maybe. I'm up for it. <laughs> no, I've got to play dad for a little bit today. We're going for another walk and I'm going to go and be Mr. Pushchair Man. So... <laughs> I'm going to wrap it up a little, but can you just tell it all? Oh, keep whacking that all the time, me. Can you tell people where they can find you, what we've got coming up? You can put all your ideas out there, all the maybes. The don't maybes. worry if they don't come to be. All right. <laughs> there's going to be so many things, I hope. There's going to be more newsletters. There's going to be a podcast, I hope. No, there will be a podcast. There's going to be I'm a just podcast. not sure when or how or... I, I can show you all the equipment you need. Yeah, I'd love, I'd love to pick your brains, actually. Awesome. Um, I'm always on Instagram. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Tori Sheard. T-O-R-I-S-H-E-A-R-D. Sheard like beard. Sheard like beard. <laughs> Tori with an I, not a Tori, Y. Spell it again, because I spoke over that. T-O-R-I-S-H-E-A-R-D. Beautiful. Um, yeah, um, new music. Yeah. The plan is June. Nice. And then again in July. Splendor <laughs> Festival. Yeah. July the 25th, maybe? Uh, Topping that bill, baby. It's going to happen. It just needs to all feel right, and I'm still figuring it out because I'm still mid crisis. <laughs> it's not crisis, it's just expansion. <laughs> um, Happy learning. But yeah, come and say hi on social media. We can all talk about love witches together. and love <laughs> and kindness all the right stuff all the right that's stuff. how i feel it's there's a it's quite a polarized time at the minute isn't it but there's a beautiful obvious simplicity in the midst of it all yeah. that you seem to embody and what oh. you seem to be about and honestly when i see your posts you're not a muted one by the way <laughs> i go straight to you and i think Big compliment. that is honestly what it is about it it's going in easy with it mm. and taking all the good attributes of the world and putting them into one place. But and also honouring the shit bits. Yeah, on understanding the shit bits, but the simplicity is how we solve them, in my eyes. We can solve this all. Not, there's so many things to solve, but it's an inside job. If you can use love, is what I believe, we can run on fear or love, hate or love. Love seems to be the strongest emotion. And when I see people's platforms and profiles that honour that, the most strong force coming through and channeling, that seems to be the closest of answers to me. That mm. seems to be the best way out of this, is just being bloody nice to one another, loving one another, knowing shit happens, but we can get through it together. It's mm. a way of ending a podcast, That's isn't it? beautiful. You're going to be all right, guys. Don't you bloody worry about it. What do we say at the end of every podcast? One thing, just be nice. Simple as that. Big love, guys. Thank you for being a part of the Old Farm Bus Back of the Bus Sessions podcast. Peace. Thank you. Thank you, Tori. <laughs>